All right, grace and peace be to you today. Let's get right into this video. So this video is a little different because I want to kind of start over. And by start over, I mean, I realized today through a conversation with someone, um, he was an evangelist. You know, he he's one of these people that they make videos uh, and they have all these stickers all over the cars saying, you know, uh, believe the gospel of Jesus Christ and all that kind of stuff. So um, I tested him. I wanted to see what did he believe? What did he, you know, think? And what I realized today is that we're not talking about the same God of this Bible. So I feel like we need to start all over. And we're starting over because I want to make sure that what I'm teaching is truth. And I want to separate the truth from the lie. Okay. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is in the New Testament talks about a foundation and you cannot build on top of a foundation that is not correct. So I want to start over and start with the foundation of our faith. I want to start by removing things that don't need to be there and, you know, rebuilding our foundation properly. And I, I was thinking about that because when I left the church, I was right really deep into the church. I was on my pastor's, you know, 12. Uh, I was one of his 12. I was in the um, youth. I was a um, children's church pastor. Um, all those little things, you know, I've, I've kind of done. But I walked away from it all when I saw some inconsistencies that did not line up with the Bible, that I could not continue to walk in that direction. But when I walked away from the church, I walked away from all of it. I threw all of it away, okay? Then I later came back, and I told y'all, I'm only going to come back to you and worship you in spirit and in truth. I will not be caught up in religion. I will not be caught up in a church. I will not be caught up in anything false. I only want wisdom. I only want the truth. Um, and I only want your spirit. That's it. So today, you guys, I'm realizing that in this Bible, this King James, New King James, all the derivatives of the King James Version Bible, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of different religions in this Bible, okay? Now, when you think of a different religion, you think of, oh, there's vast differences, and there are. If a uh, AME follower goes to a... Um, let's say they go to a um, Pentecostal church, they're going to see a very vast difference between the way they do their service, worship, believe, pray, all of that. And the Pentecostal, it's, it's a culture shock, totally different, okay? But they believe in, they use the same Bible, they use the same scriptures, but they teach them totally different. Okay, that's what I'm saying when I say there are different religions in the Bible, in this Bible that we believe in. Um, most Christians, most religions that are based on the King James Version Bible, they're so vastly different because they each pick and choose different scriptures to highlight which scriptures they're going to uh, use and which scriptures they don't use at all. 
Now, there's a difference between me and how a lot of these people are, because I believe every word that is in this Bible. I believe that our God, our Yah, allowed this Bible to stick around for so long because it still works. I know it has been changed and remixed and stuff's been taken out, stuff's been added to it. I, I understand that. But it still has enough of the basic information that we can get into Yah's presence and operate the way he calls us to. Now, he has to fix some of the things he has to show us that are there are things that are not written in the Bible that we are to do, okay, or that we are to kind of pay attention to and all that kind of stuff. And we'll get into some of those things later. My fault in this was I was teaching with the assumption that everyone had the same foundation. But after talking to this guy today, I realized there's some people that they don't have the same foundation as me. Like I said, when I walked away from the church, I pushed it all away. So when I came back to the faith, when I came back to my first love, what I did was I started new. I pushed out all the information that the church taught me and I stopped comparing it and looking at it from what, oh, this is how we did it in the church. Oh, we didn't do it that way. Oh, you know, and I wasn't trying to bring the church into this. I was trying to get into Yah's presence. Okay. I was trying to make sure that I was um, worshiping Yah in spirit and in truth only. And that was my whole focus. I want to read a couple of scriptures to you guys. And I want you guys to see where I'm going with this. All right. So in um, Exodus chapter 12, we're going to go down to 49. It says, one law shall be for the native born and for the stranger who dwells among you. All right. So that means there's only one law. This Bible, there should only be one course that Yah intended us to take. There's only one law. There's only one spirit. There's only one Yeshua. If you guys remember in the New Testament, there was a, a guy that Paul encountered. His name was Bar-Jesus. And Bar Jesus was a counterfeit Jesus. All right. He connected himself using magic and conjurings and spirits and different things to the ruler of the land. And he had the ruler thinking that he was something special when he was really not operating in the Holy Spirit at all. He was working off of different spirits. He was working off of different things that were not of Yah, okay? Until Paul got a hold of him, made him uh, blind. And um, then the man realized that there is a God, and that guy was not a part of it, okay? So I'm telling you, there's only one law because it's written in the Bible, not because I said so. Because Yah tells us himself, he only intended for everyone, whether you were native born, whether you were of the family lineage of the Hebrews, or if you were just someone who sojourns with them or lives amongst them. If you call yourself, if you desire to be a Hebrew, if you desire to be one of Yah's uh, redeemed, then there's only one law. Even today, there's only one law. It never changed. Okay. Let's go to uh, Nehemiah. I want to look at Nehemiah 1 and 9. So let's go to chapter 1, verse 9. And it says, hold on, let me find it. I'm sorry. 
eight and nine. It says, but if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. Oh, Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. What I want you guys to understand is if we will keep, if we will return to Yah wholeheartedly, keep his command, um, understand, learn him, love him, okay, just as David did, learn why you need to know and understand and love Yah's commandments and his laws. We need to understand that. We're going to get into Yeshua as well, and we're going to understand a lot of things from Yeshua. Um, but I, I want to make sure that we understand this. Um, Yeshua is a door, okay? He's the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through Yeshua. Yeshua is the door to get into heaven. He's the door to get into the Father's presence. Okay? And when that door opens, everyone just stands there worshiping the door. Okay? Instead of entering in and going before the Father. Um, Yeshua told the Pharisees, you know, you're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven and you're not going to allow other people to enter either because of your traditions, because of your ways, your wicked, practicing lawlessness. So you guys, there's so many people out here saying that all you have to do is just believe in Jesus. If you're, you believe in Jesus, then you're good. You don't have to do anything else. Well, brothers and sisters, there wouldn't be a, a need for the Bible, okay? If we didn't need Yeshua, if we didn't need this word, if we didn't need the Father, we wouldn't know about it because all we would have to do is accept Jesus into our life as our Lord and Savior, and then everything would be taken care of from there. There's nothing else for us to do. But that's not how it works. Let me explain it like this. If I invite you to my house and you go to the door, you knock on the door, you ask to come in. I open the door and you stay there and you talk to the door and you never enter my house. That would look funny. And it's funny to even think about. But that's exactly what that argument means. The argument of all you need to do is just have Jesus, accept Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, and that's it. Then you're basically standing at the door. You'll never enter the kingdom. Yah wants you to enter his kingdom, enter into his rest. And we're going to learn as we go through the Bible what it actually means to enter into his rest. I also want to later on, you know, go over this thing of um, work salvation versus grace salvation. Okay. Um, and also versus uh, obeying Yah's commands because there's a difference. Big, big, big difference. All right. Let's look at one more um one more thing in the word here, and I'm going to wrap this up. This is the first epistle of John. So this is First John. Uh, this is the second chapter. We're going to start in verse 3. It says, Now by this we know, okay, now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, 
he who is, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So they're talking about God the Father, okay? Or they're talking about Yeshua, okay? Saying that we know Yeshua and we know God the Father if we keep his commandments, okay? Um, if you know Yeshua, then the Father knows you. And if you know the Father, then you keep the Father's commandments. Yeshua wants you to believe on him, to believe his testimony, to believe he came from God, to believe he is from God, to believe he is God's only begotten son, to believe that he came into this world, um, he lived, he died for our sins, and by his blood we are healed and saved, okay? Um, but Jesus is not God. Jesus is the Son of God. They're two different, distinct people. We need to understand whose commandments we are following. Yeshua would always point back to the Ten Commandments, okay? Um, he would always point back to those. But those were not his commandments. Those are the Father's commandments. Okay, so he was always pointing people to obey his father. He always told you guys, I do only what my father says. My father in heaven says I can do. I say what my father says I can say. I am everything that the father tells me that I am. That's exactly how Yeshua lived. He only did the will of the father. And if he only did the will of the Father, he tells us to obey and do what he did, then we should also care about the will of the Father. Enough to know what is the will of the Father. And we just saw it right here. It says, if we know that we know him, if we know that we know Yeshua, we're going to keep the Father's commandments. He who says, I know Yeshua, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar and the truth is not in him. So if we say we know God, if we say we know Yah, um, just as Yeshua knew Yah, okay, just as uh, we pretend to know Yah, because Yeshua said, if you know me, you have, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father, and the Father is known by you because I'm going to tell him, Right? So we have to understand if we've seen Yeshua, if we know Yeshua, then we know the Father automatically because they, those two are one. They're so connected that there is no way that it's not going to be shared between the Father and the Son. We need to understand that it is, this is in 1 John, so this is, you know, the end of the New uh, Testament. We still have to keep his commandments. All right? And as we keep his commandments, we are going to start to learn a whole lot more about this word and the difference between the religion that uh, Christians and other people believe and the religion of this Bible, that they're, they're different religions. I was given a dream not long ago that we were not human. We look like humans on the outside when we put on clothes, but underneath our clothes, we look totally different from everyone else. So what I'm saying is deep down, when we follow Yah's commands, just like he says, we are a new creature. To everyone else in this world, we're hideous, we're horrible monsters. And that is why they hunted us down in the dark ages, okay? Now, let me make it clear. They also hunted down the uh, Muslims and everybody else who were not Catholic. But they hunted us down like dogs, okay? Because 
we were like monsters to them. We didn't do what they did, eat what they ate, believe what they believed, follow, lockstep, you know, whatever the Pope says, whatever society says. We followed our God and our God alone. And that's what we're getting back to. I just read it, you know, wherever we are, wherever we may be cast out to, wherever in the world we are, if we will humble ourselves, turn to the Father, pray towards Jerusalem, uh, the Father would hear us and he would come to us. Okay? And if we start putting him first, obeying his commands, then he is going to come and rescue us. That is our promise. Now, rescuing us doesn't look like what we expect it to based on movies, based on everything else. But it's going to happen. He's going to do it. Okay? I think that's enough for this introduction. We're going to get into this word a little bit more. And um, I want to see you guys really entering. Um, we are the body. We are the redeemed. We are those who Yah is coming back for, who Yeshua promises that he's going to come and stand on the mount and he's going to, you know, call us back to him. And we're going to meet him in the sky. And um, we're going to reign with him. We are those people. So we have to act like those people, think like those people, do what those people do. And let's become those people. We'll see you on the next video.